Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome back to lesson two of the Steaked Cardigan Knit Along with Marley Bird. In this three-week knit along, we are going to complete a beautiful steaked cardigan. In the previous lesson, you learned how to do the collar, how to set up for your raglan shaping, how to do the cables, and how to do these increases. In this lesson, we are going to continue past the division of the armholes from the body, and we will focus specifically on the body of this cardigan, as well as prepping for these pockets and working the lining of the pockets. You will finish up this lesson with some simple ribbing right down here at the bottom, and you'll be ready to move on to next week where we do the sleeves the steaking and the button band. You're nearly there, believe it or not, a lot of the knitting that you need to do for this sweater has been completed after lesson one. Now, yes, there's a lot more to go, but you can do it. The great news is in this lesson, you don't have any cables to keep track of, so that'll make things go by a lot faster. Before we continue with the rest of this lesson, I wanna make sure that you have completed lesson one because this lesson builds on that one. Also, you wanna make sure that you have this portion of the pattern in front of you so that you can follow along. Once you have all those items, let's go ahead and jump in with the next part of this knit along. I added shaping to this cardigan because it gives a very nice silhouette when the cardigan is worn. It is something that is very easy to do and it is also something very easy to eliminate. As we're going through the instructions for how to do the shaping for this very subtle contour, you can choose not to do the shaping and your cardigan will still come out very nice. I understand that there are some people who don't like this type of shaping and they just want the sides of their cardigan to go nice straight and down. You can absolutely do that. So don't be discouraged if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't know this had some shaping in the body. You don't have to add it if you don't want to. You simply can just create the edges nice and straight and just follow along with the instructions right down to where it's time to do your pockets. But for everybody else, let's go ahead and take a look at a little swatch I've worked up that we can dive in and learn everything we need to learn today for this cardigan. Okay, I've pulled this out of my swatching bin and we're gonna use this as our example. In the previous video, I talked to you about how to go ahead and divide for your armholes and then cast on stitches. And you have done that by this point. The next part of the instructions tell you you are supposed to knit for one inch past your armholes. This one inch is a pretty standard measurement from the armhole um, distance to where you would do any sort of shaping for the side of a garment. You can go a little bit deeper if you want to, totally up to you, but that would shift where your waist shaping would be. So if you've never done any sort of garment like this before, I suggest sticking with the one inch past the armhole. And that's where I am on this little piece. Now, yes, this piece is not a direct replica of what we're doing because up here, it really doesn't matter. We're just focusing on what's happening down here at the bottom. So I've put some markers in place just to signify the same points in the sweater that we were talking about in the previous lesson. So between these two orange markers, those would be my quote unquote steak stitches. And then what I've done here is I only have two markers now because we no longer have raglan shaping. So I've kept my purple here as a um, significance. They, they signify the sides of my sweater. Okay, so once you get that one inch past your armhole, this is where you would begin your shaping should you choose to do it. So the instructions tell you to go ahead and work those steak stitches, right? And then you will go ahead and you will knit over to three stitches from the side stitch marker. So I'm going to knit over until I get to three stitches before my side stitch marker. So it is important that you keep that stitch marker in place because it will help you know exactly where you need to work these decreases and later on subsequent increases. Here's my marker. Here are my three stitches. I want to do a decrease here by working an SSK over these two stitches and then a knit one. So I'm going to slip this stitch as if to knit. I'm gonna slip the next stitch as if to knit. I'm gonna take my left hand needle 
and put it into the front leg of those two stitches and then I will knit those two stitches together. What that does is it results in a stitch here that leans to the left. So it's gonna to lean towards my center marker. Then I will knit one stitch, slip my marker, knit one stitch, and work and knit two together. So these two stitches here, I'm just going to knit them together. And when I do that, that will result in a stitch that leans to the right. So this stitch over here leans to the left, this stitch over here leans to the right. So as I work my decreases, this really subtle shaping that happens will have these decrease stitches lean in towards my side marker. Once you do that decrease on the first side, you will do it again on the opposite side. So you will knit over to your other side marker. So let me just go ahead and get over to that. And those of you who followed along with me for the this or that knit along uh, a while ago will probably recognize this little swatch. I pulled it out and we are resurrecting it because it is so useful just to have a little tiny sweater like this in the round that I can show you how these um, stitches are worked up. So it makes it pretty easy to do that. I'm gonna get on over. I'm also using a different yarn. Um, I thought that this would look better on camera because it's a little bit bigger and easier to see. So I chose to jump up a needle size and show you a bigger yarn so that way you could hopefully better see the stitches. Oh, okay, so I'm over to three stitches from my marker. I'm gonna do that SSK again. So I'll do this one with my yarn in my right hand. So you slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to knit, take your left hand needle, put it into the front leg of those two stitches, and then knit them together. Then you'll knit one stitch, slip your marker, knit one stitch, and then work a knit two together. And you'll go ahead and finish knitting to the end of your round. So back to your orange marker if you happen to use the same color markers that I used, okay? Once you finish that decrease round, you will continue on working seven rounds evenly. All that means is you're just going to knit in the round without any sort of increases or decreases. Follow along with the instructions to know exactly how many times you will repeat those eight rounds. Once you've completed those eight rounds, the number of times indicated, you will continue on and work a decrease round and then five rounds even, and then the decrease round and five rounds even once again. And then beyond that point, that's when you would start your increases, which coincidentally you already know how to do because you use them when you worked on the yoke. So see, so far, everything that you need to know is pretty easy stuff. I do wanna give you a little tip though so that you can keep track of your increases or decreases pretty easily. In order to easily keep track of how many rounds I've completed after my decrease, I like to take a marker and place it into the stitch that is the result of the decrease I've done. So I can go to this marker and count how many rounds past the marker I've completed. In this case, that would be seven rounds, which means I would be back to my decrease round. So right here, I would work an SSK, so I'd slip, slip, and then knit those two together. This stitch right here that is the result of that decrease, that is where I would place my marker. So I just place it directly onto that stitch. It's not onto the needle or anything, I just place it onto the stitch, so it's just gonna hang out there. And now I have a place that I can count from in order to make sure that I'm on track for when I need to do another decrease. So right here, you'll notice I only mark this first one. I don't bother marking the second one because I only care about the first one. Once I know where it is, all the rest of them, I obviously know that I need to work my decrease or increase because this works for increases as well. And um, I can keep track pretty easily. Cool stuff, right? Okay, so we know how to do decreases. We know how to do increases. The next big part of this section is preparation for the pockets. So these are some of the coolest things when it comes to a cardigan, because who doesn't love a pocket? And they are super easy. Let me show you how to do that now. Okay, let's talk about these pockets. 
obviously I'm looking at the sample card again and I have it upside down because this is the direction we will be working. I want you to see how this works up. Now, pretend that this button band here, those are our steak stitches, right? Because that button band's gonna cover our steak stitches. But the instructions indicate that you are supposed to work across your steak stitches and then you will knit the number of stitches indicated for the size you're making and then we're going to place all of these stitches right here, all those right there, all the brown ones before you hit the blue on a holder. Once you've done that, you'll place a marker right here and you will cast on the same number of stitches as you put on hold. So those cast on stitches, those are going to be right here. That's what starts this top portion of your pocket. Once you've cast on those stitches and you get to the end where these stitches are on a holder, you'll join back up to the body of your work and you'll work around to your marker, you'll slip your marker, you'll work around all the way at the back of the cardigan to the marker, slip your marker, and then you'll work across a set number of stitches to where we'll do this all over again but going in this way. So a set number of stitches, we will put all of these stitches on a holder, place a marker, cast on these stitches, join back into the body of our work, and come up to complete our work. This is a very easy thing to do. Once you've put those stitches on hold, they are going to just hang out and wait for you to finish the rest of your cardigan. At that point, you will come back, put those stitches back on a needle, and create the inner pocket in your accent color if you choose to do that. I really like it. I think it looks really cool. Now, you can see here, just based on this simple demonstration, this is a very easy thing to do. And it's something you already know how to do. You've already put stitches on hold when we put the stitches on hold for the sleeve. You've already done the backwards loop cast on when we had to cast on stitches for the underarm, right? You already know how to do ribbing. You already know how to place markers. So you already know how to do all this. Having said that, I'm still going to show you how to do it on my little tiny swatch. Of course, my numbers are not going to correspond with the numbers in your actual pattern because my little swatch is way smaller, but you'll get the same idea as far as the way you would work this up. So let's go ahead and bring our swatch back into play. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work over three stitches and then I'm going to place five stitches on a holder and then work over to my marker. Okay. So, so I've worked across what would be my steak stitches. So I'm just, I've knit one and let's just, let's knit four instead of three. So I'm going to knit four and let's say that I'm supposed to put the next five stitches on a holder. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to just go into each one of these as if to purl and I'm going to put them on some scrap yarn. If you guys remember from lesson one, I'm not really big on using the um, holder contraptions. I think scrap yarn works better because it's a little bit more pliable for you. Plus, once you put those on, you can always just tie this scrap yarn in a nice knot and you don't run the risk of accidentally pulling it out. It's out of the way and it's fine. So if we put five stitches on our holder, we're also gonna cast on five stitches to make up for those, right? Cause this will be the top of our pocket. So if you remember the backwards Z, I grasp my yarn, take my thumb and wrap it around and then go up the thumb and then take my thumb off. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Those five stitches will now be the, the ribbing portion of my pocket. That's my pocket trim. So, oh, I didn't put a marker right there. I was supposed to put a marker right there to signify my pocket. So let me go ahead and do that. See, so this is another beautiful thing about using these particular markers is that I can just unsnap them and add them in. So one, two, three, four, five, just make sure I add this in Hopefully I didn't get it into any of the yarn. If I did, I can fix it later. Okay, so there's my marker. There's my five cast on. I would add another marker. This is the end of the pocket. And I'm gonna go ahead and I will knit over to my side. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to my purple. Remember that gold was there because that was the decrease I did. I'm just gonna ignore it. 
Here's my purple. I slip my purple and I would just work all across the back of my, my cardigan here. And why would I do that? Because I'm not putting a pocket on the back. If you want to put a pocket on the back, you could do that. You could totally use what we're doing right here and put a pocket on the back of yours if that's something you want to do. Um, I'm not going to judge. It's your cardigan. There are no knitting please, so you do what works best for you. But right now I'm going to knit over to the other side seam so that way I can create the other pocket. And let's just keep going here. Bear with me. I'll get over there in just a second. Here is my side seam. I'd slip my marker and this is where I would knit over the number of stitches I'm supposed to knit before I do my pocket over here. Now before I did one, two, three, four, then I did one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to knit to that portion. Of course you will have specific numbers for the size you are making so make sure you use those. There I am right there so I could put another marker right here to signify my pocket. I put the next five stitches on a holder, so I'm going to grab some more scrap yarn here and pop five stitches on a holder. Again, you will get the number of stitches that you need for your size you're making. And I always slip them on as if to purl. So one, two, three, four, five. Put that on there. I'll cut that here in just a minute. So at this point, I would do the backwards E to replace those stitches back into my body of work. Three, four, five. Place another marker. And then continue on with your pattern. So this is just stockinette, which is super nice and convenient. We don't have to worry about anything. And we just go on to the end of our round, which is where my orange is. So I would just keep going. So I do want to point out as you're knitting this first stitch after you put these stitches on a holder, it might get a little bit loose, but it's okay. Once these stitches on the holder get back on needles, it'll pull everything back into place. But this is essentially, <laughs> it looks like it's crazy here. These, these strings for the pockets, you can tuck those to the inside and just put them out of the way so that you don't have to bother seeing them at all. So I just tuck them to the inside. Do the same over here. Just tuck them, tuck, 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 and we're back. So we have these stitches on hold. We just ignore them. You go ahead and continue on with the pattern. You'll keep these stitches in a one by one rib because you want to make sure that they match all the other one by one rib that you will have on your cardigan. You'll do that and then you transfer them over to or transition them over to a stockinette stitch, continue on your pattern. Then you finish up with ribbing on the bottom of your cardigan where once again on the last couple rounds, you will work with your contrasting color so it matches the top collar. You know how to do all that stuff. All of that is very easy, simple knitting to do. And they are very, the instructions are very straightforward about what you need to do. This little thing right here, putting these stitches on hold and preparing for the pocket is probably something you've never done before. And it's probably like, I don't know really what's going to happen, but trust me, this works out just fine. So let me go ahead. Let me get a couple rounds in here and then I'm going to go back I'm going to put these stitches back on some needles and show you how you would work the inside portion of the pocket. So that way you know how to do that portion when the body of your cardigan is complete. How cute is this little tiny sample? I went ahead and worked up the bottom portion of this sample so you could see how this looks. I did a little bit of the knit one pearl one ribbing right here for the pocket trim. And then I did some rounds of stockinette before I went to my knit one pearl one ribbing for my edging. I do want to remind you that your portions are going to be larger than mine. And as you're working this pocket trim and this portion of your body, you will also be working increases at your edge. So you'll be doing all of that at the same time. When you get to your ribbing, the instructions do indicate you're supposed to drop down to your longer, smaller needle. 
what that will do will make the trim here at the bottom match the trim that you had up here at the top of your collar. This will also make this pull in a little bit tighter around your hips. So if you want this to be with the longer, larger needle that you're using for the body, you could go ahead and keep it that way. That's perfectly fine. I did not transfer over to a contrasting color on these last couple rounds on this just because I figured you know how to do that and I just wanted to get done. So I could get back here and show you how to work this pocket lining, which is super easy to do. So we have all of these stitches on holders. And so what we want to do is we want to place these stitches on a needle. Now you can turn this inside out and place it on a needle, but I like it right side out. It's just a personal preference for me. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cut my uh, my tie, my knot of my holder here, and I'm going to come up and make sure that I get five stitches back onto my needle. Now I'm still using my larger needle because I want a larger gauge. I want it to match the same gauge as the body of my work. Now right here you can see I had to pull up my stitch right there because I wanted to get hidden in there but if you pull it up, you'll be able to just snag it and put it directly onto your needle. Now, I don't usually pull this out right away. I leave that in there just to make sure everything is good for the first couple rows that I'm doing. So I put those on my needle, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and jump to some stockinette stitch. And this will be stockinette stitch worked back and forth. And you wanna use it with your contrasting color. Now, if you do not want your contrasting color to peep out at all from your pockets, you could do a couple of rows with your main color first and then use your transitioning color. That's totally fine and absolutely up to you. But this is as easy as it gets, you guys. You're simply going to knit these stitches you just put on here. And because we put them on, you can see I put them on in the same direction that we were knitting. Um, they're laying on my needle perfectly. So I don't have to worry about twisted stitches or anything. They're all on there just right. I simply will go ahead and just start knitting with my contrasting co color here. And when I get to the end of my row, all I have to do is turn my work. This is the first time you've turned your work and you will purl back. Now, if you don't want to turn your work, something you could do is knit backwards. Um, it's a very easy thing to do, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. But um, if you don't want to do that, it's really easy just to go ahead, turn your work and purl, then turn your work again, and you'll knit so that you're getting stock in it fabric on the right side. And then when this is done, we'll tuck it inside of that pocket and it'll be hidden away. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to knit back down and then I'm going to show you how you could knit backwards so you don't have to turn your work. All right. So I have five stitches on here and instead of turning, I'm going to knit these stitches off of my right hand needle onto my left hand needle. This is a really easy technique and it's one that's used quite often in entrelock knitting, but it's really useful when you're working with a few stitches just like this on a bigger project or even at a shoulder seam or anything along those lines. This is a great technique to add to your knitter's toolbox. So don't be scared, give it a try. First thing we're gonna do is use our left hand needle and we're gonna go into the back leg of that first stitch, okay? So I'm going to the back leg of that first stitch. I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna go over top of my left hand needle. You see that? Going over top of my left hand needle. Now I'm gonna pull that yarn through the stitch, just like a knit stitch. Pull the yarn through the stitch and I'm gonna let the stitch on my right hand needle jump off. So I go in the back leg, over top of my left hand needle, bring that stitch out of the stitch on my right hand needle let the right hand needle stitch drop off. I'm gonna do it with the yarn in my other hand so you can see how it looks over there. You will go into the back leg, go over top of that left hand needle, come out that stitch and off. So in, over the top, out, off. In, over the top, 
out off. When you're done, if you've gone over the top, your stitches are mounted on your left hand needle once again, the way you need them to be in order to knit and not have a twisted stitch. So then you just go back to knitting. You're back on your knit row, just like you normally would, knitting off your left hand needle. So you can go all the way back. I'll show you this one more time. This is one of those things that's super convenient when you just have a few stitches and you don't wanna turn your work all the time. So I'm at the end of the row, instead of turning, I go into the back leg, go over top, out, and off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. Oops. I'm going to show you once again with the yarn in my left hand because I know there are some continental bike crafty people in here. So into the back leg, around, over top of it out and off, in, over top, out, off, and then back. You want the inside pocket lining to be equal distance to the end of your cardigan. I wanna show you the sample cardigan so you can see the inside pocket lining on that one and see how it goes all the way down to the bottom of the ribbing. Let me go ahead and set this aside and I'm gonna pull in the cardigan here. And you can see this is the outside of the cardigan. Here is our pocket. If you flip this back, you can see the lining. So this is what you've created. And you're knitting it this direction, just like you would before. So if I were turning it this way, you would knit the pocket lining in this direction going down. And the instructions indicate you're supposed to knit your pocket lining for five and a half inches, which is totally fine. But what I want you to do is knit your pocket lining all the way down to the edge of your ribbing. Okay, um, do you have to do that? No, you could get it to where it's just right here at this edge of the ribbing, that would be fine as well. Up to you, but on the sample, as I open it up, you'll be able to see here that this pocket lining is knit all the way down to the edge of the ribbing. At that point in time, it is um, cast off and then it is stitched to the edge of the ribbing and it is stitched in place along these two edges of the body of the cardigan. Very easy to do. You simply just whip stitch all the way up the edge of these um, pearl bumps, just a straight up line, straight up line, no problem. And it's a very simple process. The same thing, it can be seen over here on this side pocket as well, and it looks really good. As I mentioned before, if you wanted to do a couple of rows with your main color before you jump to your contrasting color, that will actually hide that pocket color a little bit more to the inside. So it won't like peep out if you have something in your pocket. If you want it to be a little bit more hidden, you could do that, okay? So that is how you do this very simple pocket. Aren't pockets the easiest thing to do? Like with this process, you could pretty much put a pocket in anything you make from here on forward. Maybe you want a pocket in a sleeve. You could add a pocket doing it just like this. Maybe without ribbing, you do a buttonhole or something. I mean, you, you could do anything you want with this really easy construction of a pocket. I hope you found it easy as well. So this lesson has a lot of knitting to it because you're knitting the whole body of your cardigan but it's relatively easy because you don't have cables to do. You have some simple shaping to do. If you want yours to have that nice silhouette, if you want it to be straight up and down, I totally get that. That's actually how I'm gonna be making mine is the straight up and down. I don't want any shaping on mine. Um, I got enough shaping on this body, so I'm gonna make my cardigan nice straight up and down. So if you do that, the only thing you need to really do is make sure you have your pockets placed correctly so that that way they are um, at the right level when you are wearing your cardigan and putting your hands in. So just follow along with the instructions, do everything that's indicated. You have all the tools and the skills that you need to complete this cardigan up to the end of this lesson and you will be ready for lesson three where we will work on those sleeves and then we get to get down to the nitty gritty of sticking this cardigan. 
there are just a few things left after this and you're gonna have an amazing sweater by the end of it. So I can't wait. Make sure as you're working on these cardigans, you're sharing with us on social media, use hashtag Marley Bird or hashtag Yarnspiration so that way we can find your project and smash your like button. I'm loving all of your work out there. I love the color combinations and I love the excitement all of you are having. So keep it up, keep encouraging one another and be sure to ask questions in the Facebook group if you should have any. I'll talk to you guys very soon. I'm Marley Bird and this is the Steaked Cardigan Knit Along. Bye everybody.